Okay, the ticks for each grade level have been entered on a spreadsheet. This is our third grade curriculum math spreadsheet. Every Wednesday in our meetings, we decide what TEAK we will teach the following week, and we focus on that TEAK and plan our instruction. The particular TEAK for the, the following week uh, on this portion of the curriculum document is to determine the value of a collection of coins and bills. And as Lisa stated, we always look, and it's been a huge eye-opener to look at the TEAK before and the TEAK after our grade level. Um, on this trip that we're taking our students, we need to know where they've been, where, they're, where we're taking them, and then where they will go when they leave us. The TEAK before, which would be a second grade TEAK, is 2.3D, and it is determining the value of a collection of coins up to $1. In fourth grade, the year after students leave us in third grade, is 4.1b, use place value to read, to write, to compare, and order money. As we've worked on our curriculum document this year, there is a section that says, how does this TEAK change from second to third? And in second grade, students only counted money up to a dollar. And also, we look at where they're going, and by fourth grade, the students must be able to read, to write, to compare, and order money. So we know where, what we're teaching, where they've been, and where they will be going. Next, we address the four big questions. What do we want our students to learn? This is where we... Um, Think about where we're going on this trip. Is our destination the beach? And then we don't need snow gear. What is it that we want our students to be able to do? We put this in our own words. It's not necessarily restating the TEAK. It's what should they be able to do and what do we want them to learn. In this TEAK, we want students to be able to identify coins and determine the value of groups of coins and bills. Our second question is how will we know our students have learned it? On our travel, if they've learned it, they've packed what they've needed. They have their swimsuit and their flip-flops for the beach. It needs to be something measurable so we can determine if they've learned what we ask of them. In this document, we wrote students will correctly identify each coin through journaling and oral assessment. Students will determine the correct value of coins and bills in word problems using a motivation math assessment. Students show their work using hairs on the coins. Coins, And in this, the hairs are just little lines that the students draw that look like hairs, and it's a counting system for the value of the coins. Um, once we um, have answered that question. We know there are going to be students that need reteaching. So we ask ourselves the question, what will we do if the student does not learn it? If they've gotten on this trip we're going on and they have packed high heels and mini skirts for the beach, they don't have the right thing. So we need a plan. We need a plan when our students didn't get it. And um, a specific plan. In this TEAK, our students um, will be retaught in small group settings and teachers will reteach coin names and values. Students will use manipulatives to determine the value of a collection of coins. And then our fourth question is what will we do if the student already learned it? We always have those students that have packed everything they need and they are going to get to do something extra like let's go on a scuba diving mission. Um, it's the students in our classroom who excel in this subject or who are GT in this area. What specifically can they do? Students will create a visual representation or a PowerPoint presentation or a song to teach a friend who just moved to the United States how to use American currency. 
those are the four big questions and we've written those answers when we have our meetings on Wednesday. These are the things that we write and put into this curriculum document and think through for our teaching for the following week. Over in the far right column are resources. Teachers have listed resources that will be invaluable to them when they look back to teach this lesson the following year. Or if we have teachers retire and new teachers come into our district, can you imagine what an, a valuable resource this is going to be to them? These resources can be hands-on resources, uh, such as money, and in this case they have listed money. They'll use bills and coins, hot dog flashcards. There are Moodle lessons that have already been entered on the computer for like how much, and another lesson is let's learn about money. Also, other resources that have been entered into the computer are these hyperlinks, such as learn to count money. In this activity, students can put the value of the money into the box. It says put $2.28 into the box. It's a little... And we're going to pretend I don't know how to count. And we're going to see. It tells me that I'm wrong. And that is just one activity that can be used in a center, a learning center, or a station. And now, back to our spreadsheet. Uh, this is a process that we follow every, for every single TEAK. We have divided this curriculum document into six-week periods, and we meet weekly to plan our lessons and align our curriculum using the four big questions.